moving on towards our final speaker of the day. It's uh, Dr. Jiang Tianjiu. He's an assistant professor at the Fudan Development Institute, China. His research focuses on cybersecurity, non-proliferation, and strategic stability between China and the U.S. Dr. Jiang will work as assistant researcher at Center for Global Cyberspace Governance Studies, Fudan University. He delivered presentations at various institutions, including the International Student Young for Gosh Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, the Wilson Center's Asia Pacific Nuclear History Institute, and Cyberspace Administration of China. Uh, Dr. Jiang earned his doctorate from Fudan University, where he specialized in the armed control and regional security. Uh, today, he will be talking about China's strategic thinking on cyber offense and defense. So uh, the forum is yours now, Dr. Jiang. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, uh, thank you uh, for uh, Center for Pakistan and Internal Relations invitation. This is also my first time to attend uh, your event. And uh, uh, in fact, it's already midnight in China, so uh, please forgive me if I fall asleep suddenly. And uh, well, my topic is from offense dominance to defense and deterrence. I'm going to talk about the shift of China's strategic thinking on cyber war. As my, uh, this is, in fact, uh, I published the paper uh, last year uh, uh, by the World Scientific uh, Publishing House. So in fact, you can refer to the paper on the internet. And I'm going to talk about um, the large scale cyber attack. It might be different from the uh, hacking or cyber espionage issues. I will focus on those uh, large scale cyber attack against like critical infrastructures and also uh, used as the uh, geopolitical gaming between uh, uh, major cyber powers. So um, in fact, uh, the literature review on US-China cyber war, it shows that uh, um, the, most of Western literature believe that uh, because uh, uh, China, it, it is very likely for China to launch large scale cyber attack against the US and also other maybe uh, Western uh, countries. And uh, China is believed to have made uh, long-term preparations uh, for cyber war against the U.S. according to the uh, official documents uh, from the U.S. Congress. And, excuse me. And in fact, there are two groups of people contributing to the so-called the China cyber war threat. Uh, the pessimists about the revolution of cyber technology and cyber war in general, and also scholars studying US-China relations, especially those uh, study the Chinese military, the PLA. And for the pessimistic argument in general, they believe that the revolution of cyber technology has fundamentally impacted the world military balance and international relations because uh, the attribution problem and third party responsibilities, so it will be very hard to identify and retaliate cy large scale cyber attack. And also the defender has to maintain a great for, for the entire system while the attacker only needs to find a single weak point. So the offense, uh, defense balance, it, it is imbalanced. And that also the low entry barrier and the rapid proliferation of cyber weapons it multiples the power of the small and weak actors. Well, and the, the pessimistic argument on the US-China relations, uh, I, I think it, it is more and more obvious in recent years that uh, the tensions raised between these two countries and uh, President Trump also regarded China as the strategic competitor. So it, it seems that this kind of uh, the uh, Wall's bilateral relations coincide uh, coincide with the pessimistic argument on the revolution of cyber technology, and such kind of argument believe that China is uh, prepared for uh, launching large scale cyber attack against the U.S. However, we do have some counter argument against this kind of uh, uh, technological uh, I call it technological determinism. Because in fact, there are many reasons why a state has to restrain its cyber operations or so-called large-scale cyber attack. Because 
most cyber weapons are one-time use. And as long as you use the cyber attack, then it will no longer be the adversary's weak points. And the cyber attack is also helping the rival to discover their system of vulnerabilities, which means that the more frequent cyber attack, the stronger defense it needs to challenge. And the malware can be reproduced to target the original attacker very quickly. So uh, it will also cause a series like collateral damage to third party and also blow back to the initiator itself. And the damage caused by the cyber attack against a robust system with good resilience and the backup is usually temporary. So it will not change the fundamental balance of power between rivals. So um, how China's uh, strategic thinking on cyber war? Uh, according to my research, I think uh, there is a shift of this kind of strategic thinking. So uh, in the early stage of the, the PLA Chinese military the informationization. Uh, Chinese strategists, uh, they do overemphasize the cyber offense and the effectiveness of the cyber attack as a coercive tool. And, uh, but in fact, uh, I think most of the current Western literature, they uh, ignore the fact that in the uh, later around maybe 2010 and even in recent years, in fact, there have been more and more debate on the so-called cyber offense, defense, and deterrence strategy. And uh, in fact, uh, the, especially since 2015, 2016, I think that the China's strategic thinking on cyber war has returned to uh, defense and deterrence. So I'm going to explain in detail. Uh, the offense dominance period, uh, I, I think uh, is mainly uh, from 1990s to early 2000s. Most current uh, English literature, they argue that the cyber warfare is appealing to China, not only in regional conflicts like uh, Taiwan Strait, but also in peacetime uh, uh, as it is uh, accordance with Chinese uh, so-called classic thinking on warfare. Uh, one of our colleagues just mentioned the art of war. And uh, so in the it, uh, it is true that in the early stage of China's catching up with informationization, uh, the PLA emphasized the cyber offense and the preemptive strikes, and even characterized the major cyber attack as a coercive tool against the US. I have illustrated uh, many, uh, you can refer to the, 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 the PLA's textbook. They do uh, have this kind of like principles and uh, 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 cases uh, for, their students. Um, however, as I just mentioned that I think uh, the most current Western literature, they only focus on the early stage of the PLA's thinking and that they, so, which, which means that their current views is largely biased one. I think they ignored the fact that uh, there has been uh, many debate on offense and defense and deterrence uh, since around 2010. And because uh, in fact, uh, after uh, 2008 and 2009, there have been more and more uh, like civilian researchers joining the debate on cyber war. So not only the PA strategists pay attention to that, but also uh, many civilian researchers. And also because uh, China has uh, become more and more integrated to the international market. So uh, it cannot uh, bear uh, the cost of like uh, launching a large scale cyber attack and uh, its uh, potential uh, collateral damage to its own economic development and also its access to international market and, and the internet. So the year, uh, I think 2008 is a, a, is a key point and uh, at 2008, we have also witnessed there have been many uh, serious like cyber war or cyber uh, accidents across the world, like the Stuxnet, Arab Spring, and also uh, other uh, important cases, and uh, also even cyber conflicts across the world. So uh, not only the PLA strategists pay attention to that, but also other scholars from uh, diplomatic areas, from economic areas, all of these scholars, they joined the, the debate. And uh, 
In fact, I have also illustrated several uh, uh, arguments here. Um, most of the civilian scholars, they believe that in fact, uh, the cyber attack might not be that effective, uh, as effective as uh, those PLA strategies argued in the early stage. So in fact, this time of uh, the debate is a kind of like reflection on the early stages uh, cyber uh, uh, the principle on the cyber warfare thinkings. And also, um, even the PLA officers during this period, uh, I argue here, uh, they believe that the cyber attacks usually cause like uh, no damage to physical assets or personnel casualties, which means that uh, the result of cyber attack are temporary and reversible. Where in the, so the credibility of cyber retaliations become very low. So since the effectiveness of cyber attack is largely uncertain and usually limited, maybe due to the enemy's superior defense or even negative due to the collateral damage and blowback, so it further weakens the rationale for offense dominance and coercion by cyber attack. So um, finally, this is the uh, third stage, I think, back to defense and deterrence post-2015. Uh, since the cyber deterrence uh, has been confirmed as the key part of the U.S. national uh, cybersecurity strategy, um, both ch Chinese military and non-military strategies believe that it is time to develop their own cyber uh, defense and deterrence strategy. So um, I also have um, many <coughs> literature and uh, uh, illustrate a lot of uh, viewpoints here. And uh, as you can you can see, for example, like a colonel from the PR Academy of Military Science, they agree with uh, these arguments and uh, analyze how to establish China's uh, cyber de deterrence in details. For example, it says it is essential to declassify the tests for some cyber weapons and demonstrate the PLA cyber equipment and even broadcast the cyber trail in order to increase the credibility of cyber deterrence. And there is a balance between hiding and brandishing the cyber capabilities, which can perplex the enemy and dissuade the potential attackers. So these points, and they are not only the debate uh, among like uh, PLA or the non-PLA strategies, they have largely been reflected in official documents recently published by the government. For example, the Chinese military strategy in 2015 introduced how the PLA will protect cybersecurity without using the word deterrence, but it, it also mentioned the concept between like the cyber defense and the deterrence strategy. And one year later, the Chinese national cyberspace security strategy criticized the, uh, the cyber deterrence for first. However, in the section on uh, strategic tasks, it states clearly that China will simultaneously develop protection, uh, protection and deterrence and focus on identification, prevention, monitoring, early warning, and response handling, and other such segments. But furthermore, it will adopt all measures, including economic, administrative, scientific, technological, legal, diplomatic, and military measures to protect its information infrastructure and informational, uh, information resources. And the latest Chinese international strategy of cooperation on cyberspace follows the same pattern by criticizing the deterrence buildup in cyberspace at the beginning while proposing to expedite the development of a cyber force and enhanced capabilities to prevent a major cyber crisis. But although the, an official Chinese cyber defense and deterrence strategy has yet to be established, reading between the lines reveals that these strategic thinking can be found in all of the current related materials. And uh, so finally, I also illustrated several uh, sources uh, and literatures for your review. If, uh, of course, most of the resources are in Chinese. Um, I translated uh, their uh, the, 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 uh, titles and also authors and their uh, authors uh, affiliations and uh, the sources. Uh, if you are interested in, in fact, uh, there's an open database for, for, for reference. Um, so uh, last but not least, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me through email and uh, the, 
the paper uh, is on the website, so you can just uh, re refer to the paper. Um, I'm, I'm sorry because it's, uh, it's very late in China now, so maybe I skipped uh, some important parts during my presentation. I think I can leave more time for Q&A sessions. Thank you.